If you've been in a chemistry lab before or any labs that requires you to use a Bunsen burner, you would know the safety procedures. And you would also know that when we start the Bunsen burner, we have to close this air inlet. Okay, it can be a collar, something that you can twist. Okay, so the reason why we want to close the air inlet is because we want the starting flame to be yellow. And we like to call it the safety flame because it's not so hot. And what do we do to make the flame hotter? We're going to open up this air hole or this collar, we'll twist it. Okay, this allows the oxygen to flow in and we all know oxygen is very combustible. So what that happens is that it makes the flame blue and it's a hotter flame for your experiment. But what is the relationship between color that we see, blue and yellow and maybe some tinges of, you know, reddish orange and the temperature of the flame that that is, that is uh, happening inside your Bunsen burner. First question. Second question is, this is not just for flames. It is also for metal. If you've ever heat up a metal, okay, or seen blacksmith doing their work, pounding a horseshoe, you will notice that depending on the brightness and the color of the heated metal, a well-trained or well-skilled experienced blacksmith will know what to do. Okay, so they actually observe the color. This is molten metal, all right? So relationship between temperature and the color that we see. Color, color is related to wavelength light, wavelength of light. So if let's say I were to plot a graph of wavelength on the x-axis, and I want you to notice where the visible spectrum is. So the visible spectrum of light is actually from roughly 700, which is red. Remember, we did this in your AS before. And then it'll be 400-ish for violet, okay? So violet has the shortest wavelength and red has the longer wavelength. The second thing you would notice is the lower the temperature, the lower the overall intensity. So the y-axis is intensity. So if let's say you are looking at a 3000 Kelvin uh, temperature, okay, the peak wavelength is around red. Okay, but if you look at a 5000 Kelvin, the peak wavelength is around green. 6000 Kelvin blue. That's why yellow flame is less hot than blue flame, which is less hot than violet flame. All right, so you can tell that actually the wavelength of light is affected by uh, the temperature of the object. All right, so in this chapter, we're going to study this and we're going to use this knowledge and observation to observe the stars around us. Do they have heat? Of course, they are stars. Do they have a temperature? Of course, what are the colors of the star? And how do we use it to study our stars and our night skies? That is uh, Stellar Radii, and this is the next subtopic that we're going to look at. Before we can start studying the relationship between wavelength and temperature, we need to understand what is black body and what's a black body radiation. So we call black body a perfect absorber of energy. All right, that's why it's black. Okay, stars are black body. Okay, so all the things that we're studying in this entire chapter, which is basically astronomy, and cosmology is about stars and stars are black body because they absorb light at any wavelength and do not reflect any light back so it just takes in all the light okay so the only reason why you have light coming from black body is due to its radiation not due to reflection okay so i'm just going to write that here no reflection happening because all the light is absorbed, okay? So we know black body emits electromagnetic EM. Can okay, I write the full name? Electromagnetic. Electromagnetic radiation over a range of wavelengths, which is why just now during the introduction section, I briefly mentioned that, you know, we get a shape, something like this, all right? Where there will be one peak wavelength. So there's one lambda that is maximum that we will concern ourselves with. And for each emission radiation has maximum intensity. So there is a wavelength. There is lambda peak with maximum 
intensity. Okay. So this brings us to Wien's displacement law and surface temperatures of stars. Here I have a graph of intensity against wavelength. So let me label it so that it's clear. This is the intensity of the electromagnetic radiation from your black body, your stars. And here is lambda. Okay. So I think you can see quite clearly that the first thing you notice is as the temperature rises, as it gets hotter and hotter, this dotted line shows us Wien's displacement law. Okay, so Wien's displacement law, you can tell as the uh, temperature increases like in this direction, you can see that the lambda peak is actually shifting. It has shifted from red to blue to green to yellow to violet or purple. All right, so I'm going to write that down where the wavelength of the maximum or the peak emission, wavelength of peak emission intensity, we like to call it lambda max, okay? And this lambda max is inversely proportional to temperature. So the hotter it is, the smaller the wavelength. So this is your Wien's displacement law, okay? A few key terms, we are talking about wavelength of peak emission intensity, okay? It's inversely proportional to the absolute temperature of the object. In this case, the object is the star. So writing this into a formula shows us that lambda max is inversely proportional, so 1 over t, where t is the absolute temperature, meaning it will be in Kelvin. All right. So this Wien's displacement law allows us to reliably predict or estimate the temperature of your stars. Okay, so as usual, when there's a directly proportional sign, it's not very like user friendly. So for calculation purposes, we can replace this with B over T. Okay, where B, the constant B is given 2.90 times 10 to the power of negative 3 meter per cal meter Kelvin. Okay, so I'm just going to box this up. All right. And uh, also just remind you that this T is in Kelvin, all right? Absolute temperature. So if you're asked to define Wien's displacement law, then this is the statement. If you're asked to use it to calculate, this is the equation, all right? So another way of looking at it is, you can sort of tell that as we get hotter and hotter, you know, as we travel in this direction, you know, lambda decrease. So we have learned quantum physics, right? So from our good old equation, E is equal to HC over lambda, the energy of the photons emitted increases for higher temperature. Okay? So although at all temperature we get a range of, it's not, it's not that we only get one number, we get a range of numbers. Okay, so this is a continuous range, right? But we focus on the maximum, this maximum peak emission intensity. Okay, we look at the peak of these curves, right? So the peak of the graph will move towards shorter wavelengths as temperature increases, okay? And at higher surface temperature, the greater power is radiated by the black body, which is also represented by the energy of the photon actually increasing. All right. So remember that at the end of the day, electromagnetic radiation still photons like particle. So based on your value of different different uh, wavelength of light that we can capture, we can actually use this relationship to compare with the other stars that we already know to calculate the temperature. And that's your Wien's displacement law. So here's a quick question for you to apply the Wien's displacement law. Let's read the question. The sun, our good old sun, has a surface temperature of 5780 Kelvin. Okay, the wavelength of light for which the maximum rate of emission is 480 nanometer. So this is your lambda max for our sun. Okay, now we're going to look at another star. So the radiation from another star in our galaxy 
is found to have a maximum intensity of wavelength 250 nanometer. Estimate the surface temperature. Of course, we're not going to fly over there and stick a thermometer into the star because, you know, we, we can't do that, all right? So then we can use Wien's displacement law. Okay, let's write down the relationship first. Uh, lambda is lambda max. It's inversely proportional to temperature. Okay, so then by rearranging this, I will get lambda of the sun divided by, I mean, this is lambda of the other star. This is equivalent to the surface temperature of the star because it's inversely proportional, so we're flipping it, divided by the surface temperature of the sun. Okay, so again, inversely proportional, we are flipping the ratio. Okay, taking very careful about our units. So the wavelength of the sun is 480 nanometer, star is 250 nanometer, the temperature of the star is what we're looking for, temperature of the sun is 5780 Kelvin. Okay, so we're going to press our calculator. And we will find that the temperature of the star is 11000 Kelvin. Okay, so all of this is obviously just an estimate, um, and it's pretty cool. So if we already know the intensity of the star, I mean, sorry, the wavelength, the lambda wavelength, the maximum wavelength, we can actually tell the temperature. Okay, but why do we care about the temperature and why is it relevant? Stay tuned, there will be something coming up very soon. Bye.